Uh oh. myself hello everybody thank you for joining us on this beautiful evening um we're gonna wait probably one to three more minutes or so because people are still looks like trickling in clearer to you than you've ever seen uh does my mom need to be here or can they go run errands does she want to know what's going on in your life <laughs> No, Mister. It's no, okay. she, she doesn't. Go. She doesn't have to. She can go run errands <laughs> if she needs to. Was that a serious question? <laughs> How are you? I'm. You know what? I'm actually feeling really good at the moment. Good. Um. Whoops. All you can see is wrong part. Yes. Um. <laughs> <laughs> scoot over, you. Hey. Hey. <laughs> um. So you're going to help with scheduling and that kind of thing? Yeah. Yeah, we can answer questions on scheduling and those things. Yep. Okay, because um, I wasn't sure where to place him, and he has no clue. Just tell oh, him what no to worries. do. And we can always <laughs> do it one-on-one, um, -on -one too, um, with him and, and, and all that. But yeah, we're going to go over some general stuff, the handbook, kind of the things we went over last year, and then uh, uh, answer any questions anybody has about schedules or anything that comes up. Okay. All righty. All right. All right. Well, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go run errands, and we'll be back shortly, maybe. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Four people are waiting. Oops, I got to admit them. Oh. McBoom Boom's here. Oh, 
resource data. Do you think you're going to get more, like, more time to work, like, more money? No. All right, we will start at 5.05, so I'm going to give three more minutes that people are still coming in. I don't have my, so okay. there we go. Kate, Katie Caldwell is trying to get in on off of her own email, but it's not, um, she's not sure why she's not able to get it. Can't she just sit there and hang out with you? <laughs> I think she just turned it off. But <laughs> yeah, but that it should, yeah, it's, it's the link. So you should just working. be able to click the link and then get in with the code that they have there. It doesn't matter uh, what your email is. Right. That's what I thought too. Yeah. I'm going to mute us and, and try it again. Okay. Thank you. Warm. Did you turn it off, sweetie? All right, Trey. Katie. Are we typing? We're not. We're not speaking tonight. <laughs> Am I? Can I be heard? Well, you can well, be heard. I'm just. I'm well, leaving everybody unmuted this time, talk. so I'm going to rely on them to mute themselves we, we, if they've got noise in the background. I don't know. Not my bad. Is that Boom Boom? Yeah, that's me. Hey, Evan. How are you, buddy? I'm pretty... Okay, my audio is actually triggering. Okay, yeah, I'm pretty good. Sunglasses at night. <laughs> and inside. It's not at night. It's, the, it's sunny I here. I got some sunglasses. Too. I'm in Tacoma. It's sunny here. Why, hello it's there. It's sunny everywhere, I think, in the, in the Northwest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hello. All right, it is 5.04. One more minute for those who are tardy. It was kind of optional. <laughs> I like your uh, avatar or screensaver or whatever you're going to call that, Evan. Cat with night. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that's my, that's my cat. Uh, my dad was holding it and it got mad, and I'm like, this would make a good profile pick for, like, all my accounts. And then I just Photoshopped night vision and just called it a day. Well, well spent use of time. <laughs> is that Sammy back there? Hey, Katie, come here, please. That is Sammy, right? Oh. Right there? No, now, please. Is you have blonde hair? She dyed it. She, she, she tried to bleach it a different Whoa. color, but it ended up being orange. I made a very impulsive decision. That's all right. <laughs> it looks good, Sammy. Your 17 impulsive decisions are pretty natural. <laughs> so I thought you said you were on through your email. This looks like you're just on through the fellowship Christians on the website. No, because I went on there first. All right, if everybody hey. wants to mute themselves yeah, so we can get started. I can hear you. Yeah, you can hear them, but they can't hear you. We can hear you. All right. Thank everybody's muted. Thank you so much for spending the evening with us. We'll try to make this as brief and quick as we can so, for everybody. Hi, Katie. We can hear you and see you now. Now we can. Um, so we're, basically what we're going to do is, is we would normally hold this in person um, and we'd go over scheduling the parent student handbook, answer any questions you might have. Um, obviously, it's a little bit unique. We've never done an online virtual orientation before, so bear with us. We're going to do the best we can to answer everybody's questions and, and go over everything that needs to be gone over. Um, if you have a high school or middle school student, or if you are a high school or middle school student, you are in the right place. Um, that's who we are going to be talking about tonight. Um, and so I am going to ask my wonderful wife, who is also the principal, if she has anything she wants to start with, or do you want me to just jump in? No, you can go ahead and start. Okay. Um, so I will start with sharing my, oh, there's somebody waiting. Let's let them in. All right. Um, I'm going to start by going over how to register, oh, for, to classes. register for classes, um, because we have quite a few people who have not registered yet. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen real quick. We're trying to get, um, final schedules out this week. We were trying to get them out last week, but there's quite a few people who haven't chosen classes. So we thought we'd help with that too tonight. 
All right, so you should be able to see my screen. So um, from our website, if you go to our website, um, should look like this. Um, you go to a, um, admissions, enroll online, or enroll now online. Um, and then all the enrollment information will come up for you. Um, and you'll see at the very bottom, you'll have 2020, 2021 class registration, sixth through 12th grade. And then you uh, click on that. And then you'll go through and choose all of the class selections um, for each one. So you've got your, your core classes and then you've got your electives here um, to choose from. Um, it kind of explains a little bit more of each class here. Um, you've got PE, career technical, um, and more information about each class. Um, and you scroll down here for your electives, the one you want the most here. The first two the are the two electives that you would like to have the most. And the second two are your, or yeah, are your um, backup electives. So if you weren't to get your first choice. So the first two blanks are supposed to be the two electives that you want to take. And then the second two are your backups in case you don't get your first choice. Because you, you're signing up for two electives per semester. Um, then you've got your world language information. Uh, That's the next part of the enrollment is just for us to know what interest there is as we're preparing schedules even for second semester. Um, and so the second where it says student interest and then all of these um, drop downs, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're selecting to take those classes. We're just trying to see where the interest level is. So we also, so we know which classes to kind of add. Um, to the school and that's where at the very bottom you'll see additional courses of interest and you can input anything you can think of um, if there's something because we have a couple that we're probably going to add second semester that I wrote down there um, but if there's ones on the list that aren't there that you're really interested in there's a high likelihood that other people are probably interested in it too and that's kind of how we bring about our additional elective classes because it's based on interest student interest and family interest and so like uh, Mrs. Smith said, we are going to try to get the schedules out by next week, right? Yeah, but by this weekend, if everybody can, or the majority of people can get their class schedules back to me, um, then I can, because right now we have about half of the people who have done class schedules. So not mm -hmm. enough for me to put one out there. Um, so I want to try as best I can to make sure that, or we want to try as best we can to make sure people get the classes that they want, but we need to know um, who wants which classes, especially our elective choices. All right, so this is uh, priority number one for anybody who has enrolled um, to get your classes and get those scheduled. Uh, we will take questions at the end. Um, if you have any questions about class uh, registration or any class specific classes or any questions that are more one-on-one, -on -one. Um, so let's hold off on those. Um, so that's how you register for your classes. Pretty easy, pretty simple. Um, we're going to go to our, um, schedule so they can kind of see who do you want to, do you want to do that? Um, yeah, if you go to our website. Mm -hmm. So I'm taking you guys to the schedule for anybody who hasn't participated in our classes this last year. Last year we did, um, block schedule, which is like a Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Thursday, um, schedule. And we have four classes throughout the day and, um, I, I think we might have our five period schedule on here, but just so you can see um, generally how our classes are laid out. Um, this is our, yep, this is right. Okay, so if you guys are interested too, and you're at home and you wanna take a look at this, I'm gonna send this all out in email tonight after we're done with this as well, so you guys have the links to take a look at this yourselves and um, have your own time to look it over. Um, but this is under academics, and then you're gonna go to schedule and calendar, and um, the block schedule is at the very bottom. It first starts out with elementary and then goes to secondary, which is sixth through 12th grade. Um, and generally speaking, our electives are the last class period of the day. Um, and so Monday, Wednesday is one elective, Tuesday, Thursday is another elective. Uh, sometimes that's different if you're taking AP or honors classes. Sometimes the elective will be in the morning because our um, AP and honors classes sometimes fall at the end of the day. But. Is that everything? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um.
This is our school calendar. Um, you can also find that on our website. So this tells you what the first day of school is, September 9th. Uh -huh. um, and goes, whoever's Well, right now speaking, I'm just kind of, I'm cutting them up to marinate them. Can somebody mute themselves, whoever's talking? Okay. Sorry, I gotcha. Um, all right, so this is our school calendar. Um, it goes over some important dates, first day of school, um, shows you uh, some when, when we have our off, breaks. breaks, all those types of things. So you can find that on our website as well, in case you have any questions on that. Um, all right, I think that's it, all right? All right, now we're gonna go over the parent-student handbook. So this can also be found under academics. Um, and then if you go to Fellowship Christian School Parent-Student Handbook, I'm not gonna read this whole thing to you because you will have this sent out to you. Um, normally we have you, um, we issue a parent-student handbook and then we have you sign um, a form that says you received one. Um, we'll have those sent out to you um, or given to you on the first day of school. Um, and then you'll return that hopefully um, within the next week. Um, so the first start of it is just basically who we are as fellowship, um, uh, what we believe, a uh, message um, from principal, um, where our name came from, um, which is Acts 242 and the Fellowship of the Believers. Um, is essentially we're trying to model it after the, um, you know, this ministry we're trying to model after uh, the first churches um, and essentially how the, the apostles and the believers all live together, sharing with one another, helping each other, loving each other, and really spreading the word of God together. Um, and we feel we're just one part of a, a larger ministry to do that. Um, and so that's kind of um, goes into more detail here. Um, and really, our you know, like it says here, our desire is to grow as one large body, teaching and living in the ways the Lord gives us, helping one another, sharing with one another and giving to one another. Um, that's that kind of is us in a nutshell and kind of what we're all about um, and how we try to live day to day and how we try to do things at fellowship. Um, you've got some staff contacts here. Um, and so you've got Mrs. Smith, um, you've got some of the teachers here, and um, these will actually change, a couple of these will change. Um, primarily for middle school and high school, um, you'll have myself, Mr. Smith, you'll have Mr. Hunt, say hi, Mr. Hunt. Mr. Hunt's not gonna say hi. Mr. Hunt and Mrs. Smith, and then uh, Mr. Greg is with us this year. Um, I wait. There we go, that's Mr. Hunt. <laughs> Um, and you'll get to meet him. We're going to schedule one-on-ones with you guys as well for high school, middle school, in case um, you're new or want to meet the teachers before your first day. Um, so we're going to do uh, virtual one-on-ones with you guys if you have any uh, further questions and just kind of get to know us a little better and us to know you a little better. But we have an electives teacher. Uh, but we have another electives, yeah, teacher that um, isn't in here that will be listed as well. Um, we got our school hours, um, early release days, um, hours. Inclement weather, um, we do a pretty good job of trying to post as soon as we can for inclement weather and we actually have dealt with it the last couple of years. Um, and so we try to post on our, or we don't try to, we post on our Facebook page and we and we send out uh, via band app. Um, if you're not, if you don't like our Facebook page, I would highly recommend doing that um, and then also getting the band app. And it has to be one of the two because we do immediate notifications, but it's our emergency notification. Mm -hmm. Um, the band app or Fellowship Christian School um, on Facebook, that's where you'll get an emergency notifications and the inclement weather uh, notifications and all that kind of stuff too. Um, arrival at school, this kind of goes over to the, the procedures for arriving at school, um, which is a little bit different this year. And we are still updating this a little bit. Um, so the one you will get will be a, a little bit different than this because we're adding some sections on you know, COVID and a, a few other things. Um, so this one will be a little bit more updated, but it's generally the same. Um, after school, school dismissals at 4 p.m. Um, talks a little bit about um, all that stuff. Um, if there's anything really important I want to hit on. Uh, do you want to talk about this? Absence? Yeah. Um, well, we're a school in the state of Washington, so we're still held to the same attendance requirements. Um, kids have to attend a certain number of credit hours, so we're held to the same um, Becca law that um, public schools and all other schools have to follow um, and so the absence notification is just letting us know when your children are sick so that way we can um, make sure and mark it as an unex or as an excused absence um, and then just basically communication with us um, if we're communicated with and um, you know we're pretty understandable we would like you to schedule vacations during, we have three different vacation times basically on our schedule. We kind of work it out that way so that 
um, families are able to plan more vacations throughout the school year, one being spring break or Easter break, um, winter break, and then we have a midwinter break, as well as Thanksgiving that we have kind of an extended um, vacation time, um, but just mostly communication with us, but it's not anything different than any other school as far as the requirements for attendance. Um. Um, tardiness, um, that's handled a little bit differently by each teacher, depending on who you get and who you're tardy from. I can tell you how I handle it. You have a couple options. If it's a, if you're tardy to my class a few times, um, let's say a couple times, um, you have an option. You can either sing in front of the class, a song of my choice, or you can have detention. So that's totally up to you. Obviously, we're pretty flexible just starting out, new, you know, new school year, all that kind of stuff, and we help you out as much as we can. Um, our campus is not exactly large, so you should be able to, to find your classroom pretty easily. Um, and so, but we definitely will help you out with that. But generally, after about the first month, um, my tardiness um, rules go into effect. We do an orientation day the first day of school too for all of the kids with helping with their schedules and everything. And our campus is a closed campus, so we don't, we don't allow the kids to leave um, to go you know, get food or to go to the store um, unless they have a permission slip on file and they're going with a teacher, because sometimes we will you know, run to the store or um, go on little excursions um, that happen infrequently, but um, we have to have a note on file for you to be able to, or to go with a teacher. But as far as letting the kids off campus by themselves, um, that doesn't happen. Um, unless, uh, to be dismissed, they can walk home as long as they have a note on file and we know it's okay with the parents, those types of things. Um, but we are a closed campus and we do close the gates during school hours. Um, early dismissal, we went over that. Um, well, homework. So homework in general, I'm going to skip to this part right here. Um, we essentially, um, our homework policy is that we give students ample time to finish their work in class generally. Um, we don't like to assign a, a great deal of homework because we feel the home aspect is important. Um, you know, by the time they get home, it's five or so o'clock. Um, they're gonna, you know, decompress, then they gotta eat dinner. Um, by the time they're ready to do their homework, it's seven, eight, nine, ten o'clock at night, um, then they're ready to go to bed. And so um, that's not to say they won't ever have homework because I know in my class, my English classes, you'll have essays and things to write um, at times. Um, but generally we try to keep it where they can finish their work in class. Um, and give them ample time to do that. So if that's not happening, then we'll have to figure out some strategies to fix that. Um, and it's generally either they're not on task or they're communicating a little bit too much in class, um, those types of things. So um, in general, we do like to give them enough time um, to do that. If you are going on um, vacation, um, like Mrs. Smith said, we do try to ask that you schedule your vacations during our school breaks and we try to accommodate that. Um, it's very hard for us to um, put together, you know, homework packets and those types of things to plan so far in advance. Um, but if you do give us advance notice, you know, generally, you know, a week or so, um, we can try to work that out for you where we can give you the homework that they will be missing, the work that they're going to be out of class. They're supposed to get it when they return. Um, but, the, but yeah, they can get it when they return and then they have to do it. Um, and they have a certain amount of time to get it done as well. Um, graduation requirements, that's important. Um, I'll have Mrs. Smith talk about that if we have any questions about that. She's got a handy dandy worksheet that she can sit down with you and go over all the graduation requirements, um, classes that are required, classes that you need to take. Um, some of you may be coming in from other institutions or other schools, um, and so she can kind of look at your other um, transcripts and kind of help and guide you that way, and she's really good with that, uh, much better than I am. We also put it on the, reg the class registration. It tells you what the requirements are for high school. Mm -hmm. So that way when they're looking at classes, they can see that as well. Um, some safety and emergency procedures that we have. Um, so we will have fire drills, earthquake drills. Um, those are, are generally done um, at the first part of the year and then towards the end of the year. Um, we do those um, on occasion. Um, and we do have um, the policies as far as what you do during the fire uh, and what you do during an earthquake um, that we go over with the students. Um, we also have a lockdown drill um, that we do as well um, that we go over with the kids. Um, camera and audio recordings, we do have cameras throughout the building um, and then um, they're strategically placed throughout the building so that we can um, you know, see if anything occurs. Um, generally, the kids aren't unsupervised um, a whole lot in the school. Um, it's a pretty small campus, like I said, and we have teachers um, kind of all over the place, but we do have those times where they will have you know, alone time or whatnot, and so that we do have cameras in case anything occurs and for just the safety of everybody. Um, 
pick up and drop off is going to change a little bit this year um, just due to the circumstances. Um, do you want to go over that? Because I know that you're going to update that. Yeah, I did. So okay. We'll send it out. When we send out everything this week. Um, we'll send out um, updated drop off and pickup procedures. Um, we talked about it in the Q and A um, fairly extensively, and so we'll talk a little, or we'll have that um, on paper for you to read as well. Um, lost and found. Um, we generally have a lot of lost and found um, pile up. Um, we actually had somebody donate a, a retail like clothes hanger because we have so many. Um, and generally, how it works is we give you about a quarter to pick up your lost item, and if not, then we donate it. Um, and so if you haven't picked it up in a few months, then we generally think you don't need it and somebody else can have it and use it uh, in need of it. Um, uh, the fun one for all of you high school, middle school kids who really love um, this policy. Um, so electronic devices, um, you are allowed to bring your phone to school. Um, however, you have to turn it in at the start of the day. Um, so we don't allow the kids to have electronic devices um, while they're in school. Um, they do have access to them if they need to call home or if they have an emergency or, um, or whatnot, um, but they won't have them on them in class. Um, and this stems from a lot of different things. The, the main reason being um, we want their full attention when they're in school. Um, and it's very hard, as I'm sure all of you parents know, to get their full attention when they have their devices. Um, and so that's a policy that we feel really strongly about. Um, they'll have a, uh, basically a place, a box where they check it in and it, it, it stays in um, Mrs. Smith's office um, in the principal's office um, until the end of the day and then they're handed back out. And that includes Bluetooth devices, earbuds. Yeah. Um, and those extra devices mm -hmm. that you like to hide in your backpacks as a second. <laughs> we have had, we have we have um, had some kids try to skirt the rules a little bit with some Bluetooth devices and handing in phones that um, are not activated or maybe second phones and then keeping their their normal phone or whatnot. So um, uh, please don't do that. <laughs> yes, it's amazing how many times they need to call their mother throughout the day. Right. <laughs> We That's have let point. people, we have let um, students use them to, if they're working on an assignment or something at times to listen to music and things like that. But, um, but our general policy is to have it placed in the box at the beginning of the day. And most, uh, most of the time, the students are pretty good with it. We do have a violation policy. Um, you know, we try to stick by that, but if it becomes a problem, then we, we will address it. Um, so um, hopefully it doesn't become a problem. Um, you are allowed to bring like a laptop or whatnot um, if you need to work on it in class or those types of things, but you have to have a reason for having it, um, which generally would be you're doing some type of work that requires that laptop or, or electronic device. There's not just, hey, I want to bring my laptop to school so I can, you know, watch YouTube videos and uh, play Roblox. Um, so uh, school electronic devices, you will have access to um, school laptops or so Chromebooks um, to use. Um, and those can be um, checked out. Um, we are um, going to be very strict with that. However, if you do need to take it home at the end of the day, because we have had some issues with the laptops coming back damaged um, or not coming back at all. Um, During the COVID period. Yeah, and so we, we, we didn't did, have it before then. And we actually just got a really generous donation um, of some brand new laptops. And so um, we're really happy about that and excited about that, but we want to take care of them and we ask for your help doing that. Um, so we're still kind of looking at the policy, whether if you want to check it out, whether there's going to be a deposit required or how that's going to work. Um, we don't like to do that, but at the same time, we can't have um, electronics coming back broken or not coming back at all. So we have to figure out the best way to handle that. And so um, going forward, that policy might look a little bit different, but you do have access to them while you're in school. Um, and then we will talk about the policy about if you do need to take a home for you to use after school. Um, do you want to talk about anything about immunization or medical health, medication health? No, they, I've already talked to all the families. Okay. So whenever they enroll, they know all that stuff. Um, choir and band isn't going to pertain at least to the first semester, just because we're, we're not going to have choir or band classes in the first semester due to the, the COVID. Um, uh, but we do uh, normally have, excuse me, a choir or a band. Band essentially, though, is it's a worship band. It's not a like a ensemble band. Um, and so by that, I mean um, more uh, non-traditional like guitar, um, drums, maybe bass guitar, those types of things. Um, and so that's kind of what our band consists of now. Um, and so if you have an interest in, in possibly leading worship or playing worship songs or those types of things, uh, we do ask as far as joining the band, if that is a, 
something you're interested in to have some type of musical background or experience, just because it's not an entry level class. It's not, we're not teaching band. Um, we essentially would be, um, that, yeah, not teaching the instrument. We'd be teaching the worship and the, those types of things behind it, not actually how to play the instrument. Um, school programs and events um, we do have throughout the year, which this year is going to be quite a bit different than a normal year, but in a normal year, we have a Christmas, Easter, and end of year program. Um, we also have um, some other events as far as we have a um, dinner auction, um, dinner and auction where the culinary arts class actually cooks um, and serves um, the guests, so the parents and anybody else who comes. Um, it's a really fun event. We don't know when that's going to be held this year. Normally it's held in the wintertime towards um, December -ish, end of November, early December. Uh, probably won't be this year, but we're going to figure that out and schedule that um, hopefully sometime this year. And the pancake breakfast. And the pancake breakfast, yes. Can't forget pancakes. Um, community service. So throughout the school year, you are, um, high school um, is required as a graduation requirement, um, 50 community service hours. Um, and we will give them opportunities throughout the year um, to get those community service hours in. Um, if you are already volunteering somewhere, we just need to have that signed off um, so that you can meet those 50 hours of community service. Um, and so that's kind of um, explained a little bit more in this section. We have in uh, years before partnered with Casino Road Ministries. So um, there's still that partnership and we'd like to partner with other ministries um, because we'd like it to be something that's helping the community since it's community service hours and making an impact there and not just impacting the community, but the students that are taking part in it as well. And so um, we like to offer assistance with that as well. So, um, yeah. And we, we have quite a few uh, contacts in the area. Mr. Hunt has a lot of contacts in the area um, as far as churches and places that you can volunteer. Um, and so those opportunities are always available. And even if you have 50 hours, um, there's no harm in getting 100 hours, right? Um, 150. Um, we're all serving God. And so there's tons of those opportunities available. Um, even volunteering at the school um, could count as community service. Um, so those are all types of things that we can um, set up and arrange for you. Um, field trips, um, I don't, those are, those are gonna obviously going to be a little bit different as well this year. Um, and so I won't go over those too, in too depth. We normally have an overnight for the high school. Yeah, um, the one that I'm hoping that we're able to go on towards the end of the year is the high school middle school overnight trip. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about that. It's, a, it's, it's uh, an amazing experience for us and for the kids. Um, uh, Mr. Hunt, myself, Mrs. Smith, and then a few other chaperones generally take the kids. Um, it's high, just for high school students, not middle school students. So um, did I say high school, middle school? Yes. Sorry, high school. Sorry, middle school, you're almost there. Um, we take them um, generally, one time we took them to Fort Flagler. Where did we go? Not this year, but last year, Mr. Hunt. What was that place called? Uh, Squim. Yeah, that's right. State Park. Um, and so we go for about two or three days, um, generally a couple nights. Um, and it's just a time where we disconnect from the world um, and we have fellowship with one another. Um, we'll have Bible studies around the campfire. Um, we have fun activities. We'll play volleyball. We'll go to the beach if there's one up there. Um, we'll do water sports. We do fun games. Uh, the first year, I think uh, Mrs. Smith had this, I thought was a crazy idea. She, she brought this big, huge blue tarp and she was going to put a bunch of soap down on it and just do these random things on it. And I, I was totally saying games. that games, <laughs> um, but I thought it was a terrible idea, but it ended up being one of the highlights of the whole time. Um, we all got in there. We all got wet. We all um, had an amazing time. And so it's just a really cool time. We, we do end up taking their phones, um, which they don't like, um, but they end up actually at the end of it saying, wow, I'm really glad I didn't have my phone. I'm glad that we just got away from everybody and we're able to connect. Um, and some of the relationships that are built during that time and some of the experiences that are, are, are ha experienced during that time um, are pretty amazing. And so I really hope that one happens. And generally throughout a normal school year, it would happen in usually May um, is when we take the kids. Um, but we're hoping that is able to be the case this year. We missed last year due to the lockdown and everything. Um, so we're hoping we'll be able to do it this year. Um, so this is just a general philosophy for our students. Um, and it kind of just gives you a, an overview of um, essentially in a nutshell for me, what, what this paragraph will say is um, we care very much about the, the individual and the relationship that we can build with each student. Um, and we care about what their, you know, their success is at the school as far as academically. Uh, more so we care about their relationship with Christ and who's, who's, uh, who he's calling them to be in the path that he's calling them down. 
Um, and, you know, being, you know, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 years old, um, that path can change. Um, and we try to help walk um, each you know, student as best we can, partnering with the parent um, and help them find that. We've got some amazing students that graduated last year that are doing some awesome things. Um, I'm going to brag a little bit about Mr. Hunt's daughter, um, Veronica. Um, she's actually going to England um, and she's um, going to a Bible school. I don't know the name of it. Uh, Mr. Hunt, I'm sure can tell you a little bit more. But um, after she's done with the Bible school, she's going to sail around Greece and essentially learn about God and travel all the places that um, you know, Paul and the New Testament and all that went and share, share the word of God, essentially. And, and so that's really awesome. Um, and we've got other kids that, you know, we've got one kid who graduated a couple years ago um, who's going to Northwest University who is studying to be a nurse um, and is already actually working as a nurse during this time, or at least a CNA. Um, and so that's really cool, too. And so we try to keep in touch with all the kids as best we can, um, as we truly do care about um, your future and who you are. And um, we do love and care about each one of you guys. So that's kind of my philosophy, I guess. I don't know if it says all that, but that's the long-winded paragraph for you. Um, consequences. Um, we've got some, you know, rules and stuff here. Essentially, we want to know why the behavior is happening more so than just give you consequences. Um, you know, there will be times where um, kids do do something that isn't appropriate or isn't okay in school. And generally, we want to meet with that child and if if needed, bring the parents in and find out what we can do to help support that, that student so that they can be successful in the class and at school. Um, dress code. This is always a fun one. Most of the time with the behavior, just really quick, um, the consequent comes when it's repeated behavior or it's something very severe. So if a child's receiving a consequence, it's not because it's just happened one time. It's become a repeated behavior and we haven't been able to really necessarily get through without a consequence as well. Right. Well said. Dress code. Um, I think the highlight here for this is this word here, conservative. Um, Really, modesty is what we're looking for. We're not going to nitpick every single little tiny thing that you wear or don't wear, um, but there are some rules in here for guys and girls. Um, essentially, the, the main ones that we deal with um, on a day-to-day -day basis are the ripped jeans. So we do allow ripped jeans, but we don't want anything above the knee. Um, I don't want, you know, none of us want to see anybody's thighs, um, um, you know. Uh, what other ones? The For the most part. We haven't had to deal with too much. Joggers. Joggers for girls. Um, generally, we, we do allow you to wear them, but you have to have wearing something that covers your bottom area. Um, so uh, I think that is... Are you talking about yoga pants? Yes. Joggers. <laughs> joggers, yoga pants. They're the same thing, right? Or no? <laughs> no? No, sorry. Joggers are not the same thing as yoga pants, apparently. <laughs> so joggers are like what are they? What are they called then, besides yoga pants? That. What? Leggings. Leggings, yeah. whatever. Okay. Um, I wear mine at home. So I'm asking you to just wear yours at home unless you have something long enough to cover your bottom area. Um, so he's saying because they're tight fitting, um, that's one of the where conservative comes in. It's not that because there are some um, leggings and stretch pants or yoga pants or whatever. Not you like joggers. To call them, um, that um, are actually kind of transparent. They have transparent pieces on them now. And um, so it comes into play in, in those two different things. So one is that the it, they shouldn't be transparent above the knee. Yeah, and so same with like rips in pants and stuff like that. And secondly, um, if you are choosing to wear leggings or um, yoga pants, that it should be something that um, is covering, you should have a long enough shirt that it's covering your behind um, and or dress. Sorry, um, do you want to make sure he gets that? Um, other than that, um, there isn't a whole lot of other in here. So we don't allow spaghetti straps. Um, you do have to have your shoulders covered. Um, girls tank tops need to be at least two inches wide. Um, no open backs or low necklines. Um, the one other aspect of the dress code I want to hit on is chapel. Um, so our philosophy at Fellowship Christian School is you can wear or um, be anywhere in the world and be worshiping God, right? And, and that's okay and that's perfectly fine. Um, we do ask that on one of the chapel days, either Thursday or Tuesday uh, for high school, middle school, that you do dress up. 
um, and, the, and what's required for each of the boy or girl is right here. Um, you only have to wear it for that you know, hour, hour and a half that we have chapel. You can run to the bathroom and change if you want to at the end of chapel. Um, but we do ask that you spend one day dressing up. And essentially the, the, the philosophy behind that or the reason behind that is um, we're setting that, side of, setting that time aside for God, um, right? We want to make that a, a time where we reflect, where, where uh, it's a special time. And I, I guess, like I said, we believe that you can worship God no matter what you're wearing or what you come with or however you come. I mean, we're totally on board with that. Um, but it's just getting into that mindset of I'm, I'm going to worship God today. I'm going to be in the presence of God today. We're going to all gather together um, and learn about him. Um, and it's just making that time special and, and just saying, um, essentially, I am bringing my best before him. And so um, we don't really care what you're wearing generally, um, but one day the, one, a chapel we do either Tuesday or Thursday. Um, and you will be let uh, the chapel uh, person, which is generally me for high school or middle school and Mr. Hunt as well. Um, and Mrs. Smith too, occasionally, um, we'll tell you what day that'll be. Um, the zero tolerance, um, we have zero tolerance for bullying, physical or verbal abuse. Um, and so we do take those very seriously. You know, um, it says there that we abide by John 2, 6, you know, we're, um, we're asking our students to walk as Jesus walked in love. Um, and so we do take those very seriously. Um, and depending upon the severity of the incident, the child may be expelled. So um, generally, we haven't had an, any issue with those types of things. We have had certain little things come up where we've had to deal with. Um, we haven't um, necessarily had to go to those extreme uh, circumstances. So um, that is the policy for that. Um, is there anything else that you have in here that you are pretty Sorry, much? I'm sending this to them so they can get on. That's fine. Um, conferences. So we do have parent teacher conferences are scheduled twice yearly. Um, the first and third quarters. Is that going to change at all this year? Um, no. Okay. The, so one is optional or optional to us. You can you speak about it? So uh, as far as conferences go, our first quarter conferences after first quarter, um, we make that mandatory because we, one, um, we have a lot of new students. Um, at the beginning of the school year and we want to be able to have all that communication with all of the new families as well as the continuing families and um, just be able to basically get feedback from families um, about anything that we could be doing differently um, as well as just you know kind of giving an idea of where your children are at uh, as far as in the class and um, everything in the school and so our first quarter conferences are mandatory but um, the third quarter is ba is optional or based on um, who basically we feel like we need to talk to, but communi communication in general is ongoing. So don't feel like you have to wait until conference time to be communicating with us. Um, we much prefer having it um, right away if there's something that you notice is going on um, than waiting until conference time and hearing about it um, because we want to um, be doing our best all of the time and not just when conference time comes up. I sent it to him. You don't have to do it. No. Um, and then some more teacher communication, um, our address, that kind of stuff. Um, volunteer. Do you want to talk about volunteering? It Volunteering is not going to start. It, it doesn't have to do with orientation. Okay. I'll send that out. It doesn't start until October this year. And that's pretty much it for the parent student handbook. Like I said, there's going to be a section on COVID added just because that's going to be um, something that comes into play this year. Um, and then there will also be a section on online learning, which I will go over now. Um, this is in the event that we do go online, which we should have um, our announcement and everything what um, the that's going to look like on Monday, so a week from today. Um, but I do, do we have any questions before I move on with this parent student handbook or scheduling or anything like that, that I can answer right now before we move on to online learning? All right, everybody's good. So we use a program for online learning called Vetimo. Um, and I'm gonna show you a short video on it. Um, it's about a, a minute and a half long. Mr. Um, Smith, there's one text question. Oh, I didn't. I'm not. I'm sure. Is PE a requirement each year for middle school? What was that, Mr. Hunt? The question is: Is PE a requirement for each year of middle school? 
It's not, uh, so PE is not necessarily a requirement for middle school. We allow the students and families to choose the two electives like they do for high school. High school, it's a requirement um, in order to graduate, whereas middle school, it is not. Um, it's great to get physical activity and exercise, but we are leaving that up to um, families to choose for middle school for their elective choices. So the short answer is no. Sorry, I didn't see the text because I have uh, shared my screen. Um, so Venmo, I'm gonna show you a short little video, um, kind of give you an overview of it. Um, and if you have any questions, you can go from there. I don't know if you guys are gonna hear my, I'm gonna share my screen again because I have to enable my sound. You can provide the link for them in there, right? Yeah, I will, I'll do that. So Clean you guys will hear platform this. for distance education. It was built in close collaboration with students, teachers, and parents in order to create a flexible solution for the needs of K-12 education. All classes are held in our virtual classroom. It combines video conferencing, connectivity, and an interactive whiteboard with document sharing and breakout rooms. Each lesson can be converted into a template for future reuse. Besides schools, universities, and training centers, Vedemo could be used by businesses, to reach their clients and partners, to improve collaboration between colleagues at distant offices, to organize webinars, internal and external trainings. Here is the interactive whiteboard in a virtual classroom. It holds up to 25 active participants simultaneously, who can create and edit at the same time the same educational content. They can see and hear each other. They can chat in a group or individually. They can share images and documents, audio and video files, embed YouTube videos and show presentations. Personal notes can be taken. The teachers can orchestrate the whole learning process according to their style of presenting. They define how each student can use the tools. Audio, video, whiteboard, chat and files. They can grant presenters rights to any of the participants or invite a guest lecturer. Breakout rooms can be created in order for the students to work in teams for a period of time. All sessions are recorded so students, teachers and parents have interactive access to the content at all times. All right, um, so that's a little bit of an overview of Vetimo and then we can answer questions or whatnot about that as well if, it, um, if need be. Um, we also use, um, where do I see my chat at? I'm gonna stop sharing. We also use Google Classroom as well, um, which we can go over too. Um, if we go online for learning at some point, but not for kindergarten, right? Um, it, de it depends that, so for the online, um, gen, you know, we're, we're trying to all be online, um, but I can't say if it's in gonna- person. In person. I'm sorry, in person. Um, but I can't say what age groups will or will not be. Um, there's a lot of things being released every single day right now. Um, you know, from the governor, from the, the health departments, Pierce County Health Department just required all schools, both private and public, to be online. Um, Snohomish County hasn't done that. Um, so I, I can't really answer that yet as far as what age groups. Um, but generally, if we had to be online to start the year, we are going to hopefully all be in person. But if we had to start the school online, we would have, you know, K through five, hopefully in person and then high school, middle school online. All those options are still on the table. So I can't really answer the age groups or anything yet. The other thing, though, too, that we talked about in the question and answer session is if it becomes worst case scenario and everybody is forced to be remote again, um, like happened towards the end of last school year, um, we still have uh, emergency care, which includes pre-K as well as other grade levels. Um, so it's not necessarily every single person um, that is online. Mm -hmm. um, and so we can discuss that more too. And we did, we're gonna extend that a little bit more um, as far as numbers go, as much as that we're able to, um, if that is a requirement from the state or whatnot. Um, who? Mister. I don't know. Mister has Yes, Mister, go ahead, buddy. So are we going back to school or not? You will know on Monday, August 24th, 2020. Okay. But yes, we're going back to school. I can see you right now. 
I know, but I mean, <laughs> no, like, we're all, like I said, we are all trying to be in person. That's our number one goal. And that's what we're trying to and striving for. Um, and I wish I could tell you right now, whether that's going to be the case or not on September 9th. Um, but I, we're doing everything within our power to get ready for it. Um, and we're trying as hard as we can to be able to make that happen for you guys. Cause we all want to see you and be with you in person too. Uh, and if that does happen, I'm assuming that we're going to have to wear masks. Uh, yes. And uh, like, what what would uh, happen like when we go to school? Would you do like uh, some pictures on the internet where it shows them taking their temperature and all that, or would we just like walk in with a mask? If you were at the Q and A session a week ago, you would have known all these questions. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. No, um, um, we have a yeah. we have a door thermometer that we're using for um, summer camp right now. So you actually it takes less it takes half of a second to take your temperature. So you basically walk by it and whenever you enter. And we're using three different entrances for, so we're using our two back doors and the front door um, if we're yeah. gonna be all in person. So that way it's like the high school and middle school are gonna use the back door that you're normally not allowed to go through. Um, that is gonna be your um, entrance point um, for school. So you're basically yeah. going down the hallways you would normally be, be in. And there'll be social distance requirements where your desks will be at least six feet away from each other. Um, all those kind of things. And we'll be maybe using different spaces of the school that we wouldn't normally use um, just to keep you guys as far away from and, and socially distanced as we possibly can um, during the school day. Yeah. Good enough answer? Yes. All right. We don't, Mr. We don't have as many students as like the public schools or even like some of the larger private schools. So it's a bit easier yeah. for us to try and do those things, but we still have to be creative too. And so that's why we're saying we very much want to and are planning on being in person, but we don't know, like, you know, as stuff comes up, unfortunately, we're not, we're, um, we're not God. And that's not unfortunate because God has a way better plan than any of us. Um, but, you know, we're rolling with it as, you know, as God basically, uh, you know, all this stuff happens. So keep yeah. praying for in person. We want in person. Um, yeah. We know you guys want in person. Um, we are, we have had the question um, also from some families that if you would, if they would like to start online, whether or not that's a possibility and oh, the answer uh, to that, <laughs> yeah. And the answer to that is, um, yes. Um, so if there are families that want to start online, you can start online as well. Yeah. Uh, this is probably a question that you haven't been asked, but, uh, the, how do you know, like you said that the, the door thermometer, you just walk past it and it takes a temperature, but like, how would you know if someone's above, uh, like, uh, uh, is above what? A hundred degree. It tells it us. It, tell, it reads it. it. It pops it up in numbers right on the screen. Oh, I, I was hoping it'd make like a big noise, like, no, get out. Nope, it doesn't but, do that, but right. maybe you can code it and, and, there and make is, one. I think there's actually a setting for us, uh, like you can set it for a, at a certain temperature and above it makes an, uh, like a, like an a alarm beep. noise, yeah. but yeah, we didn't. It do actually, yeah. you know, it does flash red. It flashes red if you are over 100. All right. This is Heather's the pro. She's been at summer camp all summer with it. Um, and well, to kind of go just real quick, because we had a few questions on it. So there's a bunch of different factors that are going into our decision, whether to be in person or online, right? And, and generally, we're leaning way towards the fact that we want to get all the kids in class and, and in person, right? Um, and we're trying the best to do that. Well, I'm going to share my screen real quick here a little bit because we are staying on top of all this stuff. And so um, this is actually at coronavirus.wa.gov. And it's essentially a snapshot of um, the goals that we're trying to um, meet in order to be safely, you know, opening schools and those types of things. Um, and so the rate, 100,000 newly diagnosed cases um, is currently at 114, and the goal is to be at less than 25. Um, to, they, they say to safely open most schools, um, and so we're not meeting that goal right now. Uh, the number of individuals that are tested each week um, at each new case prior to the prior week, um, we're at 2.1 um, and we wanna be greater than 50, so we're not meeting that goal. Um, and the percentage of individuals testing positive for COVID-19 during the past week, um, we're at 48.5% and we wanna be less than 2%, and so we're not meeting those goals. The good one, the ones that we are meeting um, are the number of beds that are being occupied. 
um, and the number of um, licensed bed for COVID-19 cases. Um, yeah. So we're meeting both of those. And so these are all the things that we're looking at that and, and um, there's also um, from the, the Department of Health uh, kind of a decision tree um, on should your community provide in-person learning and for whom. Um, and it kind of it says, do you have this many cases? Do you have this many cases? Or do you have this many cases? Um, and you kind of follow the tree. And so we're essentially in here where we're at a high, you know, we have greater than 75 cases. Um, we're at the 114, it said. Um, and so the- For the state. For the state. And so it, it right, what it's recommending is strongly recommend distance learning with the option for limited in-person learning in small groups. Um, like Mrs. Smith talked about, we are a smaller school and so we are much more flexible and we can um, do other things that larger institutions couldn't do. Um, and so we take all this into account when we're making the decision and ultimately um, we leave it in God's hands and, and his um, guidance and will is the most important. Um, and you know, we're talking to people, we're trying to make the best choice that's the, that you know, accounts for everything, the safety of our students, the safety of our teachers and, and families. Um, as well as trying to get everybody back in person because we know how valuable and, and amazing that is to be in person with a student. Um, and then at the same time, if we can't be trying to provide the best option that we can uh, virtually. Um, and so all those things are being worked on throughout the entire summer. Um, a lot of us have spent a lot of hours on getting these things ready. Um, Mrs. Heather has been doing summer camp throughout the entire summer um, and they've had no issues as far as um, COVID and that goes, and they've um, done an amazing job and had a lot of fun. So um, we are taking all that into account when we're making our decisions, just so you guys know, you know where we're coming from in that. Yeah. Last question. Last yes. Question. So the, the thermometer has a red light to prove if you're above 100, right? Yes. So, it tells you, right? It tells you, you can see what the temperature is when you walk past okay. it. So I technically can't go to school because I'm always super hot, but I mean, I'll try. Okay, you'll be all right. Yeah. It'll work out for you. All right, um, do you have anything else besides that? That yeah. was as far as, um, so I think that's generally all that we wanted to cover with you guys today. Um, and I'm gonna open it up to any questions or whatnot in case anybody has questions about classes, schedules, um, anything we discussed, um, anything else that possibly might've come up. Um, so feel free to either type those questions or you, you can unmute yourself. Um, so you shouldn't um, have Jerry to wanted up. to know who's teaching PE. Who's teaching PE, Mrs. Smith? Um, probably the electives teacher. The electives teacher, Trey? It's a lady. It'll have to be a secret until the first day. <laughs> no, that's not true. We'll probably announce it this week. Yeah. We told her by tomorrow. Both of them are. Late. Question is, who do you want to teach PE, Trey? All right. If we don't have any other questions, I will let you guys go. Um, make sure you do get those class um, registrations turned in as soon as you possibly can. Um, that's important for us to be able to build your schedule for you. Um, and then we are trying. So next week we're going to do one-on-ones with the new students to kind of meet us and ask any questions. Um, so if you want to do that, we will have that opportunity to do that. Uh, for those of you who already know us, you are welcome to schedule one as well. You don't have to, um, but we do want to give the new uh, new students the opportunity to speak with us and um, ask any questions they have about us or the new year or anything. Uh, Trey had just applied for the PE teaching job. Is that what he said? Mm -hmm. I think my um, wife typed a question in there on the uh, chat box. Uh, I don't see. know if you guys read that or not or already addressed right, did it. Did we miss one? We might have missed one. I had to step away for a minute. I don't see one, no. No, it was answered already, Nick. Oh, was it? Okay. You answered it already. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Great. All right. All right. Well, thank you so much again for hanging out with us. Uh, go enjoy the last bit of sunlight we have tonight, and um, we will hopefully see you guys soon. If anyone yeah. Each PE, it should be me because I'm the only dancer here. <laughs> uh, dance, right. you're hired. <laughs> Trey will All love right. that. All right, have a good night, you guys. <laughs> See ya. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs>